Hey, hey friends, it's Corey from Hey Let's Make Stuff. In today's video, we are starting a series about fixing sublimation problems. This is one of the biggest topics I get asked about, and so I thought I would create a small series of videos to help work through any problems that you're having with your sublimation projects. In today's video, I'm going to run through a whole bunch of different problems you might be having both with your sublimation printer and with your transfers. So hopefully this will help you troubleshoot most of the problems that you're having. Then I'm going to do a whole video on how to fix a clog within a sublimation printer because I know this is a problem that a lot of people have. After that, if things go well, I'm going to do a video on how to actually swap ink in your printer, which is something I get asked about all the time and I have been thoroughly avoiding because it can be a very messy process, but I've been asked about it enough times now that I'm going to do a video on it. And then finally, I'm going to do an updated video about ICC profiles. I have a very popular video here on YouTube that talks about ICC profiles, but some things have changed, especially for Mac users, and I also want to give more options for adjusting color manually, so I'm going to be doing an updated video on that as well. Hopefully these videos will address basically any problem that you're having with your sublimation printer or your sublimation transfers. But if you're having a problem that I haven't covered, please leave those down in the comments so I can make sure to cover them in a future video. But like I said, in this video, we are just gonna be talking about a bunch of different problems you may be having with your sublimation printer or your sublimation transfers. To start off, let's talk about how to avoid problems in the first place. I mean, we don't have to fix our problems if we don't actually have our problems. The number one thing I recommend to avoid mistakes mistakes is that you read the instructions. Read the instructions from the manufacturer. I would also go online and watch videos, read tutorials. There are so many variables when it comes to sublimation printing that there is a lot that can go wrong. And so if you can get basically as much information about what you're doing beforehand, that can help you avoid mistakes. I just don't want you to be discouraged, so definitely do as much research about your project as you can before you get started. Because it's a little bit hard to see on video, I am actually gonna throw some photos up to show some of these issues that I'm talking about here. So the first one we're gonna talk about is when your sublimation print has sort of streaks or banding. This means that you can sort of see the printer lines when you're printing, or you might have white lines in your printing, and there are a couple of things that can cause this. The first is that you have your print quality set to low, so your printer is trying to save ink um, and it creates those lines. The print quality settings are different if you have a Mac or a PC and depending on what software you're using. So you may need to do a bit of research to figure out how to change that print quality from either ink saving mode or low quality mode to best or high. The second thing that might cause banding is if you have bi-directional printing turned on on your printer. This means that your printer is basically laying down ink both left to right and right to left. Bidirectional printing can speed up the printing process, but it can also reduce that vertical alignment. So basically each line that it prints is not perfectly aligned with the line right above it. So you can go again into your printer software and turn off bidirectional printing and that should reduce banding as well. A third reason you might be seeing streaks or white marks in your printing is because you have a clog. Now, like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm gonna be doing a full video on how to clear a clog next week. So I'm not gonna go into details in this video. It's quite an involved process, or it can be quite an involved process, and it was just too much for this video, so I'm gonna make it its own video. So if that is your issue, sorry you're gonna to have to wait a week, but we will get into that next week. The second problem you might be seeing is if your sublimation transfer is faded. So right off the bat, I wanna say that the print that comes out of your printer is going to look faded. Sublimation ink is a different composition than regular printer ink. You are never gonna to want to look at what comes out of your printer as your final project. You need to apply it to a blank to be able to see what it's actually going to look like. I highly, highly recommend getting a just you know a couple yards of cheap polyester fabric and doing test prints on that polyester fabric before applying something to a more expensive blank. This will allow you to see if you're having any color issues or other issues before you actually use that expensive blank. Once you transfer, however, if your image is still faded, you might be having a few issues. The first one you might have is that you're having paper issues. I have found that different types of paper actually hold and transfer that ink differently. I know that a lot of people like a sub paper. It's fine, but I have found that I don't get quite as vibrant prints using that paper as I do using the text print brand. So you may want to do some testing with different brands of paper to see what works best for you. I also tested using regular copy paper and my images were really 
faded. I know that some people like to use regular copy paper, but I have found that I can significantly tell the difference between using sublimation paper and regular copy paper, and it's just not worth it to me to have that sort of faded print when I can get a much better print with that sublimation paper. You also wanna make sure that you're printing on the correct side of your sublimation paper. So most sublimation paper now has a watermark on the back, making it very easy to know which side to print on, but if your sublimation paper does not have that watermark on the back, it's really easy to print on the incorrect side. So look at your sublimation paper and you wanna be printing on the brightest white side. So sometimes the back will be a little bit pink or a little bit gray. You don't wanna print on that side. You wanna print on the bright white side and that will give you the brightest, most vibrant transfer. Another issue you might be having to get faded images is with your substrate, so what you are actually applying your transfer to. Sublimation requires a polyester or polycoated content to be able to actually complete that sublimation, the scientific process of sublimation. So if you are using something like a 50% polyester, 50% cotton t-shirt, for example, your image is going to be more faded because it's only adhering to that 50% polyester and not to the cotton. This might be okay if you want sort of a more vintage look, but generally you want 65%, 75% polyester to get a really vibrant transfer. You also wanna make sure any other blanks you are using have that polyester coating. You can't just use a mug from the dollar store, for example, it doesn't have that special coating on it. You need a mug specifically for sublimation. So if you are transferring your sublimation print to something and it's just not coming out at all, there's a good chance that whatever you're transferring it to doesn't actually have that poly coating and it's not made for sublimation. And then like with the paper, you wanna make sure you're sublimating the correct side of your substrate. For most substrates, it's pretty easy to tell what you wanna sublimate, but with something like maybe a sandstone or ceramic coaster, it gets a little tougher. So you have a bright white side and maybe a slightly more off white side, you wanna make sure you're sublimating on that bright white side. That's the side that has that poly coating and your transfer will look faded or won't show up at all if you try and sublimate the other side. Another reason you might be seeing faded images is because you're not using enough pressure. So some blanks, especially things like tiles and slates, require firm, even pressure. So if you're not getting that firm, even pressure, you may end it up with sort of faded edges. You can see that in this photo that I'm gonna put up here. Um, I didn't realize I needed more pressure when I was doing this tile. This was back when I was first learning. And the corners are just not as bright and vivid as the center of my tile. This comes up a lot if you're using a handheld press like the Cricut Easy Press. It is sometimes very hard to get firm, even pressure using that press because you're applying the pressure. Um, this is why I really, for doing sublimation, if you can, I recommend getting a traditional heat press that where you can set the pressure yourself. One, it's just easier, but two, you're just gonna get a lot of better results with sublimation. Another problem you might have is that your sublimation is sort of blurry around the edges, and there are a few things that can cause this. The first is that you might be using too much time or heat. Um, if you press something too long or at too high of a temperature, after a while, the ink that's on that paper can sort of bleed out on the edges of your project and you'll notice those blurry edges. You can reduce the temperature, reduce the time a little bit, and often you can solve that issue. Another reason you might be seeing a blurry image is because of a poor quality coating on your actual substrate. So if you are buying really inexpensive blanks from somewhere like Amazon, you may notice that the transfer is just not as crisp as it would be using a higher quality blank. I know that sublimation blanks can get expensive, but if you're sort of ruining the cheap blanks, you might as well buy the slightly better, more expensive blanks and get a good project the first time. Another reason you might be seeing those blurry edges is because again, you're applying uneven pressure. So you might be applying too much pressure to one side of your blank, causing that ink to sort of gas out. So it basically sublimation ink turns into a gas and it sort of like blows out a little bit on one edge. You may notice that and basically making sure you're using even pressure can help with that particular problem. And then finally, another reason you might be seeing those blurry edges is due to moisture. I live here in the Pacific Northwest, so trust me, I get it. It's always damp around here, and that can really cause issues with your sublimation prints. So if you do think you're in a high moisture area, you can actually hover both your transfer and your substrate underneath your heat press for 30 seconds just to dry them out a bit, and that can really help with that blurring issue you might have due to humidity or other moisture. Next up is ghosting. Ghosting and blurring, sometimes people use those terms interchangeably, but ghosting really is where you'll see basically a double imprint of your image just slightly off from your first image. 
and this happens because your image has shifted. There are a couple of ways to help with this. The first is to tape your transfer to your project really well. You can even use a heat resistant spray like the Pro Spray 2, and that will help with that shifting. The other reason that shifting happens is because you open your heat press too quickly and it basically pulls up on that transfer. It creates a little bit of a vacuum, pulls up, and then the transfer lands again, and it's still hot enough to sublimate. So the thing to do here is to open your heat press slowly. Now, if you're using something like the Cricut Auto Press, it opens automatically. So that can cause ghosting and that's really frustrating. So the thing that I do is I actually stand there next to my Cricut Auto Press and I will hold down the lid as it pops open so that it doesn't pop open so quickly, lift that transfer and create that ghosting. Another issue you might have is that you're seeing spots or little squiggles or marks once you have transferred your transfer to your sublimation blank. And this is because you didn't clean your blank well enough. If there is any hair, dust, fibers, anything like that, they can get hot enough to actually sublimate those particular things onto your blank. So I'm gonna show you a picture of a mug here. Apparently I didn't clean it well enough and you can see these little squiggles and dots. And that's because whatever was on the mug actually got sublimated to the mug as well as my transfer. So the answer here is to clean your blank really well. If you're using soft blanks, I highly recommend a lint roller. Make sure you're um, pulling the tape off that lint roller and really getting it clean. You may wanna do a couple of them. And if you're using a hard blank, you can use a lint roller, it does work. However, I really do prefer alcohol and a microfiber cloth just because it gets things like fingerprints up. The lint roller's not gonna pull up your fingerprints, oils, those sorts of things. So if you're using a hard blank like a mug or a tumbler, you may wanna think about using alcohol and a microfiber cloth instead of a lint roller. Next, we come to a big one, and that is your sublimation color is off. And this generally happens if you have a converted Epson printer. So if you're using something like this Brother printer or a Sawgrass printer that's built for sublimation, you shouldn't have nearly as many color issues and you probably can just skip this section. However, if you're using a converted Epson EcoTank printer, there is a good chance you're gonna have color issues. I will go ahead and link to my current video on using ICC profiles to adjust your color on your sublimation printer. This is a very popular video on my channel. A lot of people have found it super helpful. I think it is still about 80% helpful for what's out there right now. It does need an update, which is why I'm going to be doing a new video on it soon. If you are a Mac user using the most current version of their OS, I think it's Catalina, I'm not sure, using that most current version, the ICC profile video is going to be a struggle. And that's because as far as I understand, Mac took away the ability to add an ICC profile. So I'm gonna do a deep dive into that particular issue. I'm gonna see if I can figure out how to do it. If I can't, I'm gonna give you a much more in-depth tutorial on how to adjust your color manually. And that will be coming in an upcoming video. Again, it was just too much to fit into this video, but if you're using an older Mac computer or you're using a PC, then my ICC profile video that I have linked below this video is definitely one you can watch now to help with those issues. There are two other reasons you might be having issues with your color. I'm gonna go into them here. I will probably go into them in my other videos as well. Um, the first is that you might be having issues with your monitor versus your print. So monitors are made of light. Um, RGB, red, green, and blue light. And because of that, they can create many more colors than the four colors of ink in your printer can. Your printer has C, M, Y, and K, and it can't quite accurately represent what is created with light in your monitor. So for example, rendering something like neon colors in ink is very difficult without specialized inks. You'll be able to see neon colors on your monitor all day long, but actually making those with those inks is very hard. So that is another reason that your prints might not look exactly like you think they're going to look, and that's just because of the difference between how your monitor creates images and how your printer creates images. You can do a monitor printer calibration, but again, that is different for every printer and every monitor, so it's something that you'll have to research to do yourself. And then finally, your color might be not looking quite right because you are either undercooking or overcooking your project. So I suggest getting your blacks right and your other colors may fall into place. So basically, if your blacks are turning brown, you're cooking your project too long. If your blacks are a little bit green, you're not cooking it long enough. If you can get that black right, then your other color should look pretty good. Another problem you might have is that your sublimation image is reversed. So this one seems pretty obvious, just make sure to reverse your image before you put it on your blank. 
However, if you think you're reversing your image and your image is still coming out backwards when you press it to your blank, there's a chance that you are actually double reversing your image. And this happens depending on whatever sort of software situation you have going. So for example, if you are using Cricut Design Space and you mirror your image, and then you go into your printer software and you also mirror your image there, that means that it is basically double mirrored and it's not mirrored at all. So when you go to put it on your project, it's reversed. So just make sure that you're only mirroring in one place Place, and that way your image will be the correct way when you go to press it on your project. And then finally, I want to talk a little bit about shrink wrap. Generally, shrink wrap is used for sublimation projects you do in an oven, and I've seen a lot of people lately struggling with shrink wrap stuck to their projects. So there are two ways to help get that shrink wrap off more easily. The first is using a higher quality shrink wrap. I'm probably gonna beat this dead horse a lot, the higher quality um, products that you are using, the better results you're gonna get. There's a reason that they are more expensive generally. So if you are using a really low price shrink wrap, you may find that that one sticks a little bit more. The second thing you can do to keep that shrink wrap from sticking is to get it off your project right away. So if I'm doing a project, say I am sublimating a tumbler in a convection oven and I have that shrink wrap on there, I will grab my heat resistant gloves and I will pull that shrink wrap off right away. The longer you let it sit, the harder it is to remove. That was a lot of issues that you might be having with your sublimation printer and your transfers. But of course, there might be something that I missed. If you are having an issue that I didn't cover here or you have other questions, please leave those in the comments. Other people might be having those same issues and I can answer them down there so that everybody gets an answer. If you found this video on sublimation troubleshooting helpful, I would really appreciate a like on this video. Then follow my channel for more sublimation, Cricut, laser, and other crafting machine content. I'll see you next week.